Welcome back to my channel and happy Travel Tuesday! So today I want to talk to you about my trip to Boston. Um, my boyfriend and I went to Boston in March and um, it was snowy and it was cold so I kind of wanted to do this video to just kind of give you guys ideas um, for th of things to do while you're in Boston when it's snowy and cold. So one of the things that we did do is the Freedom Tour. That's obviously one of the most important things that you need to do when you're in Boston is the Freedom Tour. It takes you to pretty much all of the important stops in Boston. Um, there are two ways that you could do it. You can actually start in the Boston Commons or you can start at Faneuil Hall and work your way back to the Boston Commons. Uh, we actually did, we started in the Boston Commons and we went over to Faneuil Hall. So there's about 20 stops. It took us, I think, two hours. Um, it was, we did actually do that while it was snowing. So there was a couple inches of snow on the ground, but it was still cool. It was still fun. I myself am not a history buff. I, that was my least favorite subject in high school. I hated it, but I actually enjoyed myself a lot more than I thought I would on the Freedom Tour. I know that's, that's definitely one of the things you have to do in Boston. So, you know, I was all for it just for that reason. And I actually did enjoy it a lot more than I thought I would. The second thing is um, just take a walk around Boston Commons. If it's, you know, not snowing and not completely freezing, uh, the, the Boston Commons is a really large park that's got um, monuments and uh, statues and little plaques that you can read, uh, little just tidbits of history. And um, it's, a, it's a really fun thing to do if it's, you know, not super duper cold. The next thing we did is the uh, duck tour, and if you're not familiar with what a duck tour is, a, a, a duck is a vehicle that can drive on land and is a boat. So they actually took us around the city first, and then we went into the river, and we took a tour of Boston from the river, and that was pretty cool. That was a couple of hours, too. It was really reasonably priced. Um, and our tour guide was really awesome. He really got into it and he really was knowledgeable. So that is something that I definitely recommend. Like I said, I'm not a history buff. I'm not really into that kind of stuff, but I still enjoyed myself um, in this tour. The tour guide definitely made it really fun. Uh, the next thing is the Prudential Center slash the Skywalk. And I'm going to cheat and use these as two different stops. Uh, the Prudential Center is just this, um, it's just like a mall. There's, you know, stores and restaurants and all that stuff. And it actually, that is where you get up to the uh, Skywalk. And the Skywalk is a 360 view of um, Boston. And up there on the top floor is a bunch of uh, information. There's a lot more like um, sports and information about like uh, important people who are from Boston. So that's not 100% history. So that's really cool. And then you get to walk around the entire top floor and just see the entire city of Boston. And that is really, that's a really cool, fun thing to do. The next thing that you can do is, which we didn't get to do, um, we didn't get to go inside Fenway, but you can actually tour Fenway all year round. Obviously, it was March and their baseball was not in season, but you can still go in and you can still tour and you can see still see how cool it is. I think that and Wrigley Field are the uh, two oldest baseball fields in America. So that was really cool to see. There was a lot of buildings that were, you know, really super old and still in their original state. We ended up just walking around the outside and it was really cool. There were statues and, you know, plaques from uh, when the Red Sox have won the World Series um, on the side. So that was really cool. But you can actually go inside and take a tour of Fenway. So if you're into baseball, that's something that I definitely recommend that you do. Something else that you can do is actually a whale watching tour. So um, it's a, a harbor cruise. And there's other harbor cruises that you can take too. This one just kind of piqued my interest. We didn't actually get to do it because we did miss the date by two days. So obviously the whales don't migrate year round. So there are select dates that you can actually take this tour and we did miss it by two days. So um, there's other harbor cruises that you can just go and, and um, take around, but if you're going to do like a duck tour, I, maybe that's not something that you want to do because they're more informational, um, but that is something that you can do if you are into that, and that's actually right next to um, the aquarium. 
So the aquarium is, um, it's not large, but if you're into the, you know, the museums and all that stuff, it, it is something that you might want to check out. Uh, one of the other museums is the uh, Boston Tea Party Museum. So they do talk a little bit about the Boston Tea Party on the Freedom Tour, the Freedom Trail Tour. Um, but if you want to go see the entire museum dedicated to the Boston Tea Party, then they have one of those. And you can actually pretend to throw tea into the harbor. So that was really cool. The next thing that we did was the Sam Adams Brewery Tour. So I'm not a big beer drinker. Um, I do try new ones. I'm still in search of a beer that I would actually order um, from a bar, but I just, I don't know, I don't like beer, and uh, that's fine, but I do love brewery tours, so Sam Adams actually started in Boston, um, and it was really cool to see um, how they make the different beers, and we did get to taste some of those at the end, and then they have a really cool gift shop, they've got, you know, Sam Adams on everything, and they were actually brewing a beer that was specific to, they only sold it in the gift shop, so that's something that if you do drink beer, that, that might be something that you want to check out. We actually flew to Boston, so I couldn't take any back with me. The next thing that we did, which I wish we spent more time um, at, was the Science Museum. So the Science Museum is two floors, and it's got three wings, and it was just really fun. It had, um, there were, it was super interactive. There was tons to do, and I, I don't really like those museums where you have to just like read everything and that's how you learn. That's really boring. I'm a super hands-on person. So this was really hands-on. There was a lot of little experiments. Um, it was really fun. I just wish that we had spent more time there because we did that in the morning um, one day and then we had somewhere else to be and so we had to leave. Uh, we couldn't spend like the whole day there. but. If you're really into museums, that is definitely one to check out. And then I've got two little uh, bonus, you know, stops. Um, and the next stop, the next one was uh, Faneuil Hall. I mentioned that we stopped at Faneuil Hall after the Freedom Trail tour. So we went from the Boston Commons to Faneuil Hall, and then we just kind of hung out in Faneuil Hall. There's more um, historic information, and by that time I was just burnt out of history. So, but um, Quincy Market is actually. Um, you can go up and down there's uh, shops and restaurants and it's actually like three buildings i know there was like a comic book store i think somewhere along that route um so it's just it's really cool it's a really cool stop it's um kind of an old timey looking market and actually around the corner from that is one of the oldest restaurants in boston the ye old oyster house and this was another cool stop because sam adams brews a colonial ale that is only sold at that one restaurant. So of course we had to stop there and we had to check it out. I've never had lobster before and I was still too chicken to try it, even in Boston, but I did have the crab cakes and those were phenomenal. They were 10 times as good as they are here. So I did end up getting sick on this trip. Um, I just had a head cold, so we only were there for uh, four days, but it was still fun. I don't know why we chose Boston, but no, that's a lie. That is a lie. I know why we chose Boston. So when my boyfriend and I went to London for our one year anniversary, uh, we had this restaurant called Wagamama. And it is um, an Asian fusion, it's a chain restaurant, but it's an Asian fusion place. And it was one of our favorite places to stop at in London. And the only place they have it in the United States was Boston. So we both kind of had a craving for that while we were looking for a place to you know, go for our two year anniversary. And uh, we just kind of picked Boston because of that. So I think that's it. Um, if there are any stops that you guys recommend, um, I'm planning on going back to Boston. I don't know when, but if there are any other stops that you guys recommend, please list them in the comments down below. I don't think I have anything else to say other than thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, I can make some more. Um, so thank you for watching, guys, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Oh, something I did want to mention is um, they actually have a Boston Go card. So you can actually go see a bunch of sites for one price, and it you um, you pick up your, your card. It's actually just a, like a booklet of coupons, and it'll get you in a bunch of places, which is why we did the Science Museum, the Skywalk, 
um, a lot of the stuff that we did was uh, included in the Boston Go Card, and it wasn't really that expensive. 